we have Ricardo Iacolelli, he's a KDE contributor and developer since more than 10 years now. He started at age 14, so imagine that. He's a Plasma Core developer and he's uh, also collaborations with CERN and other um, research institutions. And now we will present his latest project, uh, Wiki FM. I would like to change the way higher education is, is, um, is delivered and is taught to students. Not only to students, actually, but also to researcher, professor, continuous learner. And to explain you this, I want to tell you a story today. A story about how a group of students uh, from physics and mathematics in a university, in an Italian university, are trying to make an impact and to change how the world does these things. To opt up. This is a picture from 1967 uh, of MIT in a classroom. This is the same classroom in 2015. Can anybody tell me what changed? No clues? Personnel. <laughs> Well, you see here, that's better. The, the professor here has a jacket, and here just wears a jumper. Dress code is changed. You can see how that could be a problem. We have some space for innovating here. I would like to ask you, how many, how many of you are, uh, are or have been university students here? Well, the greatest majority, I would say. Then, second question, harder. How many of you have, have always been in the university, new? all the time, what you had to do for an exam, had all the lecture notes collected in one easy place. Anybody? Exactly. I always failed at that. I was absolutely terrible. I, I usually spent most, the biggest part of my study for my exam in actually collecting all the material that I needed, all the lecture notes. I had good friends, for, fortunately, so we could exchange notes and we could confront each other on what we had to do. But it was very, very suboptimal. We had a few forms of communication, such for example, we had a Facebook group, but you know what problems there are in a Facebook group. First off, it's Facebook, so it's not open source, it, not everybody has Facebook. Also, the, mean of the, the way you can communicate on Facebook is limited. You don't have, have threads, you don't have any way to store permanent content. What would have you done? What would have any free software developer have done? Say, well, I can install my own software. I can start a wiki. It was a private wiki, but it was a great success between my fellow students. Because well, we, can, we could write down everything, just we were about 50, 60 people, so I just needed one to remember everything, and we could collect uh, good knowledge. We also use it for things like writing down the most common questions of the professors, since it was a private wiki anyways. And it started to be moderately useful. Now, fast forward of six months. Everything changed, and we started having the first ideas for, that I'm presenting now, here today for our course, a course of advanced calculus, which was extremely well made, but so well made that the professor who was teaching us how to do calculus <coughs> was giving us exercises that not even the assistant was able to figure out how to solve. So we, we were in trouble. We, we, we were going to have an exam after four or five months, and we had no way to, we, we didn't know at all how to solve the exercises to, to pass the exams. We were, we, we, we were students who wanted to make an effort, and so we decided to learn ourselves how to make these exercises. And to write a manual, our own book, on how to solve this. Everybody was concentrating on one little part, was studying on advanced books, and then figuring that out, and then writing it for, for everybody to know. At the beginning, to collaborate, I proposed, well, why don't, let, why don't we use Git, why well, it's so fun, but then for mathematicians and physicians who barely used Linux at that time, it was not really the best solution. So, second option, well, let's try to store it on the Wiki. And there is no web page. Imagine here there is a web page. I'm, I, I, I honestly don't know. It worked five minutes ago when I tried that. 
Anyway, well, we, we can see to that. It's close enough. Uh, this worked very well. The material was extremely high quality. All my year use it, has used it. The year after me has used it. And everybody has passed the exam. And then we figured out we could extend this to other courses which we liked or which were particularly difficult, such as quantum mechanics. This is quantum mechanics, for example. And at that point, we, we ended up with a lot of material we figured out. We ended up with 15, about 15 books on different subjects, more than 2,000 pages of scientific content. And the, great, the, the most important thing was that this material was extremely high quality. Which is, it, it is high quality exactly because we use it for studying and we pass the exam. So we know it works. It works for a university course. Not only this, but we started to see that it was not only the people from my university who were using the content. It was also people from all around Italy. The greatest episode about this was uh, when I went in Erasmus in Sweden for six months. And I remember meeting uh, an Italian student of physics who was at a certain point right to me and say, oh, look, I, there is this amazing website. Check it out. There's plenty of things. You will use it for everything. He said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had the idea, the idea of the FM, which is what I want to explain to you today. The idea to have, to collect in one single place all the material, all the lecture notes, actually even up to the, from lecture notes to textbooks, this is the range we want to tackle, in a free and open way and collaborative way. And we found that what we want to do is we want to answer the question, can we actually kill textbooks? Oh, would be nice, wouldn't it? Imagine, no textbook? You, do you remember the class at the beginning? That, that's a way to innovate. Instead of textbook, we have we have documents created collaboratively. We have textbooks which are alive. When something new gets discovered, it can be integrated. When another university has another approach to a certain topic which can be found interested, I mean, all of this can be discovered. Textbooks can be assembled. I cannot tell you, okay, study this subject on this textbook and this other on this one. I can assemble everything. Why we could assemble everything? We, we are basing Everything, uh, WikiFM is based on a few technologies which are really, really nothing, nothing new, like LaTeX or a wiki. And another ingredient which probably has been around for more than these other two students. But what WikiFM really brings into the mix, which has not been done before, is the connection between these three things. We have some open source projects, such as Wikiversity. I've checked the Italian version. It's, it's really, it, it's not really, let's say, n not really complete. It has, like, for a physics course, it has three pages of content. Uh, we got plenty of C++ manuals, but nothing else except computer science. If we use the power of the students who are doing the work, of taking the notes anyways, and we just tell them, okay, let's try to write them on the, on, 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 online. Uh, we go to the professor who writes some lecture notes and has published them on a PDF on a website, but would have no problem to write them on a website. We tell them, put them together. Put them in on a unique source. This, unfortunately, is much more than we, as were university students who really do this in the free time or in their study time, but still, we have a very limited amount of time could ever think of tackling. This is really a global challenge. It's a challenge that goes beyond the Italian university. It, it really it can be embraced by, by everybody. And it is why we decided to ask the KD community an incubation. We wanted to have the shoulders in order to support the weight of doing this global challenge. And KDE, thankfully, said, yes, you respect the manifesto. You are a KDE project. And we also got baked by Wikimedia Italy, which is uh, the, sister, um, the sister organization of Wikimedia, the foundation behind Wikipedia.
at this point you could ask, okay, I mean, this is nice, very, very nice, but, you know, I'm just a developer. Who cares? I'm, I've been a university student, I'm no longer a university student. And my answer to this is, whoever told you that WikiFM is just for the university. For example, we implemented this for the university, actually for some research centers. Uh, but really, there is no wiki page. Uh, okay, I, I, would, I really had this with demos, uh, but I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's the internet or something that do not show up. Uh, I think I will. Well, this one is less important. The next one I will go to another tab and show you. Uh, imagine here there is uh, some code, some snippet of code, and it can be run inside the browser itself. You just have a C++ code and a button run. You click run, the code gets compiled, executed, and the output is in the browser. And you say, okay, still, this is nice. It's closer to what I do, but it's not what I do. What I do is this. It's, it's a KDE session. I, I, I develop KDE programs and applications, and I would like people to use this easier. Don't you notice something strange in this, uh, in this screenshot? Such as this bar? You know why? Empty page, but I told you there is a demo. Because this is our lastest feature, our lastest edition. This is live version of WikiFM, and I'm logged in. Every logged in user can see this. And you would just, you want to develop KDE? Good. You press KDE development image. And this is it. On another yeah. server, remotely, I just got booted up a private, um, a private instance of KDE. I just log in. This is my KDE desktop. Look, it also has compositing and QM and, and, and OpenGL. And this is entirely in my browser. I can play games. So imagine here having your application your source code, and having the possibility to have um, users just and new potential developers just go on the website, I want to develop KDE, how do I do it? I want to try out Threadweaver. Why could it be nice? Just host there the examples. They don't need to download anything. They don't need to spend hours to compile the development environment or install all the development libraries. But like, it's done. Where is this running? This is running in, in Milano. In, um, and the hosting is sponsored by GAV. Um, resources, you, you say? Because of course, this is very resource hungry. Well, this is an actual quote from a private conversation with one of the managers of, uh, of this institution. It's told us, resources, no problem. We'll just do like Google. If you have more users, we'll just throw more hardware at it. So, this is also nice. Um, this is the main features of WikiFM, and I hope I introduced them to you in, um, in a way that at least gave you some interest in the project. Now I want to tell you about a few, thing, a few other things that happened around WikiFM in the last months. The first thing that happened was that earlier this year, a new foundation, uh, a new entity, a new institution what is started to be created in the physics world. An institution here is missing a logo. Sorry, uh, there is no internet, and sometimes the, the pictures here, there is an ENFN logo. Uh, I'm noticing my slides today are not, uh, it doesn't want to work. Um, key people in this institution got together to try to fix a problem in the physics world, which is we are, uh, the students that come out from the universities are not ready to. Um, to work in the big experiments. They tried to fix this solution by organizing summer school, excellent summer school, directly as a place. But this was, they, they figured out this was not really the solution because you could come, you can make a student come over and stay there for two weeks, but it would just be a very limited amount of students, and in two weeks the training you can perform is limited. They say, why don't we try an online approach? where we have lectures, our lectures from our training, which is for sure at a top level, but that everybody can consume around the world. Every, every interested student can consume. And they were looking for a platform, saying, what do we, can we host this? We need 
a place which is seeable, usable, but still has some African training. Well, the solution was obvious. We gave him. They started to contribute. Look, this is oh, this works. Good. Uh, this is the web page, the live web page of Have Software Foundation, where they are populating everything. Oh, they just started. They started not even a month ago, so they don't have everything yet. But they're starting to populate all their all the training material, which could prove to be a very valuable addition because if you have people from this institution providing direct training on this KDE platform for everybody, it's increasing visibility. It's a win-win for everybody. And what about the rest of the world? This is great for physics. I mean, with this, it's got high energy physics, probably got astrophysics also. But what about the rest of the world? Well, this is just an initial plan for what we have right now. In September, we already have organized three seminars, three official seminars. One is going to be at CERN, where we're going to officially present it to the scientific community. One is going to be at Fermilab, the equivalent of CERN in America. I, I hope this, this recording doesn't go to them, because if I, if I call them the equivalent of CERN, it's like, oh. it's just for, uh, it's just bearing for this one. And another one in Chile, with uh, the presence of the major Chilean uh, universities and the Chilean government, who seemed very interested in, in WikiFM. This is for September. It's quite a big, busy schedule. October, we're going to speak with these other universities. We're going to start in Milano Bicocca an experimentation where the professors will go to the students and will uh, will ask them, please take lecture notes directly there. We'll try to institutionalize this so that more and more people are writing on this. And we are in contact with these other three universities, which might or might not start at the same experimentation. That's something we are doing right now, as I'm speaking. Um, but all these contacts are like coming in every, every moment because every professor we speak to, every institution, they're really, really happy. It seems like that's what they were looking for since years. And we're just now providing it to them. November. We don't know. Do you have contacts? I, I, I was talking with Sandra Andrade. He told me he would be very, the, the new board member, he would be very happy to have the same thing in his university. A colleague yesterday was asking him the same question of mathematics. So, at the university, why not? I've been talking to the people, to, to, to the organizers of this university, the GPUL. They also told me, oh, that would be interesting to have this in, in our university too. So, we don't know. But at least I hope that by December we achieve world domination, at least for, for training. In this meantime, we're going to have some development continuing. Uh, but more important than development, is spreading the word. As I try to make it clear to you, Wikifam is less about coding, it's also about coding because we support some beautiful features to allow people to write chapters of books and remix them and give everybody the freedom to take that different parts and remix them. But spreading the word, going to university, going to professors, going to the people who are already doing the work and just telling them, don't let your work be rotten somewhere on a server or unknown. Make it public, share it, collaborate with other people. Put it on a single platform where it can continue to be useful. Mm. Sami Gira. All of what you've seen before was made by less than 10 students. It's hard, as in any open source project, to say the exact number. Who have been working in about 1-2% of their study time, just putting things online instead of writing them on paper or on their own computer. Maybe so just figuring out a little bit how to use MediaWiki. It has been in Italian only. And what it has led to, so it's a very limited premises. What it has led to is 2,000 pages of high quality material, more than 200 users per day, unique users per day. The interest of laboratories such as CERN, Fermilab, seminars in Chile, other contacts. It's huge. So my real question, my real question for you is, with the help of KDE, can we do more? Thank you very much.
Hi. Uh, I'd like to ask what's the relation between Wikipedia and Wikibooks? Because it's sort of like a related thinking backed by different people. Mm. Actually, our real competitor is not Wikibooks, it's Wikiversity. Mm -hmm. The solution to this question lies in the slide where there is a triangle and a written connection under it. Wikiversity has a wiki, has not really LaTeX, but some form of LaTeX, uh, but it doesn't have students. It doesn't have universities. What figured out is that, unfortunately, the academical world is very, very close in itself. It doesn't really know much about what is going on in the rest of the world, and unless you call that before, so I mean, you show it to them. Uh, an example of this is the Italian Wikiversity, which I checked out because it's kind of our direct competitor, even if we got baked by Wikimedia Italy, which should be on the other side, so it's not really competing. And it's really tragic, the situation there. We, we have no content, nobody even thinks about going there and putting their material. Um, so if it's born in the academia, you have way more contact and way to, to have people contribute to this. The second way to answer this is technical. It's a minor detail, but unfortunately, Wikiversity, as, since it's a Wikimedia Foundation project, is has very, very strict requirements on a software that can run on it. And sometimes this software, this additional software, is very useful for, for training, such as, for example, a, a document like, uh, I will show you, Hopla. a document such as uh, this one here requires numbered equations, Requires references, requires. This is a aligned environment. Mm -hmm. MediaWiki, the MediaWiki that is on the Wikimedia Foundation doesn't want to support this by design. Mm -hmm. another, quest, another question which was made to me was Do we support UML? Yes, we can support UML. We can add extensions, we can add all these kind of features that are essential for training. They're not essential if you want to build a, 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 an encyclopedia, of course. But when you want to build a book, a book like a textbook, you don't really need these features. So these are the two sites that differentiate us. Did I answer your yeah. question? Okay. More questions? Okay. Have, no more questions? questions? Yeah. Um, so the, the uh, teachers, the professors were all okay with, with uh, publishing their uh, lecture notes to the, to the world because if I remember correctly from my days, uh, the teachers had yeah, at least some of the professors were a little bit protective about their uh, lecture notes, but... It depends. You have, of course, we, every time we publish them, we were uh, careful to go to the professor and ask. Uh, there were professors who were saying, yeah, sure, go public, everything, no problem. We'll, I also give you the things I wrote, you can do whatever you want with them. Some others, where they would say, where, which were a little bit more worried, they would say, you can publish them, but don't say it was me, it's unofficial, because of course they had no control over that. Uh, others have told us, do it, and then you can put my name, or you can say, I also check them. When you finish, you give me the PDF, I correct it, and we'll do a real work. So it, it's mixed things. Uh, nobody ever stopped the students to write their own lecture notes and their own summaries, of course, because also they, I'm not really sure they are allowed to. So, but, uh, so, of course, you have different reactions. There were, uh, uh, one of the <coughs> real strengths of WikiFM is that you don't really need every professor to help you with that. You need one professor for every course, maximum. And I think if you take all the university, all the student population, you really, really easily can do that. Another question, sure. um, which license do you use for the content published? Is uh, um, GNU FPL and Creative Commons by Sharelike. I'm not, not, you, let me, I'm not familiar, I don't remember if it's uh, FDL or GPL. Uh, anyway, it's exactly the same licenses as Wikipedia. So the idea is attribution, Sharelike. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. I would like to remind everybody we're going to have a call. Uh, Monday, 11.30, 
It's a book two hours, which should be enough to cover any kind of topic. We can develop new languages, we can speak of the technology, we have many, many kind of junior jobs in all kind of areas, if you're interested. Or, as I was saying in the slide before, please spread the word, because I feel that KDE is not really aware of what we are doing and why we're doing it. Um, so, please do that. Second request. You told me at the beginning you were or have you are or have been university students. You can't lie now, you raise your hands. If you can go to your university, go again to your university, take one course. Take just your favorite course. It's enough. Go on the WikiFM page, add a few references to the material you really found more useful when studying. Just this. This is an, uh, enough contribution to the Kickstarter project. If you want to contribute at a second level, go to your university and speak to them briefly about what I just showed you. I can assure you, I spoke with hundreds of professors until now, the reaction will be enthusiastic. And it would be a great contribution to WikiFM and KDE. This is it. Thank you.